Good to see you guys. Happy New Year. Um, Rupert, you've, um, you've sort of been there and done that, haven't you? And you worked for Lotus many years ago in its Formula One operation. Talk me through the move to Lotus Cars and, and um, what, the, what the thinking is behind that. Um, yeah, I, I was a team manager for Team Lotus in the 80s um, during my full one career. But uh, I joined Lotus again in, uh, two and a half years ago. Um, it looked like I had some very exciting plans, particularly for motorsport. So um, I had the opportunity to join them two and a half years ago, and I did. Um, and you've, you've worked for Lola, haven't you? You've worked for Ray Malik. What sort of experience do you bring to Lotus Cars? Um, when I'm old. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I, I suppose I've got quite a, quite a good, well-rounded experience. Lots of, lots of experience in Formula 1, both on the sort of technical and management side and also on the commercial side. And then Lola uh, was really sort of real motor racing, building cars to sell to people. And then my, car, my time at RML was fantastic, really successful race organisation, touring cars, and um, obviously I'm lucky I can bring all of that to Lotus, so I'm a, a well-rounded individual. It's important to stress, isn't it, this is Lotus Cars, nothing really to do with the Formula One operation, you're not involved in any of that. No, that, that's true, We're, this is Lotus Cars, this is uh, racing cars based on our road car products. Um, the Formula One team obviously has a, a fantastic relationship with Lotus uh, Formula One team, and it's a brilliant branding global exercise, but that's completely separate to, to, to my, my view. The brand has a, a huge pedigree, a huge history uh, in, in road car production, sports cars, and in racing. Um, is it on the ascendancy again now, with cars like the Elise and the Avora? Yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, it's, it's no secret, it's had a bit of a sort of a difficult few years, but the, the last 12 months have been terrific. The company's completely stable and forging ahead. The cars, the, the, all of our three car, models, are fantastic drivers' cars, and uh, we're um, developing um, more and more in emerging markets. It's just terrific, so yes, it's good. And I get to look at them all week. And all weekend. And, and us of you too. Yeah, sorry about that. And we can hear you too. Sorry about that. Would you like us to turn it down a bit? <laughs> um, Stefano, welcome to All Sport International. Good to see you. Uh, you're running in the Elise S Cup and it's making its debut pretty much now, isn't it? This is this is it. Yes, uh, we, we decided to to change some rules in the Lotus Cup Italy and uh, for this reason we decided to keep uh, down the cost due to the bad economical moment and we decided to run uh, with the Elise Cup R uh, because it is a, a really funny car to drive, it's, um, it's the best car for, uh, for the entry level for gentleman driver because it is light, it has with a supercharged engine 1.8, it, it has a very good torque and uh, so for, uh, for a gentleman driver uh, and the entry level uh, we think that it is uh, the best uh, the best car and for this reason we, we decided to change from all models to only one model in the Lotus Cup Italy so uh, this year for 2014 uh, we will run only Lotus and East Cup R. Do you have a number of championships running around Europe that all run to the same rules or is it one international championship? Um, there are eight, uh, eight, at the moment, eight different uh, Lotus Cups for different regions or countries, and they run to similar regulations. We are, uh, we are going to sort of tidy up the regulations over, over, over the next few years, uh, but they are basically the same, with a few variations for some sort of local market region. But they are basically the same regulations over eight countries around the world. And is it very strongly policed? It, it varies a little bit depending on the country. Uh, certainly in Europe and England it's very, very, very good scrutiny. Same with the case in Italy. In some of the faraway places it's a little more, a little more casual. But these are emerging markets with people that are just learning about motorsport. So you don't want to kill them too much in the beginning. But, but eventually everything will be uh, very similar and the same. So in actual fact, one cup can race against another cup to join forces on occasion to stop them. And it's a, it's a very good way of, sort of spreading the Lotus brand globally, isn't it? It is terrific. I mean, I mean we're lucky because Lotus, Lotus Road Cars have a strong motorsport DNA and um, there's no better way to demonstrate than on the track, either with something behind the wheel or something watching someone racing. So yeah, it's, it's a terrific way for us to um, show the car in its best light probably. Stefano, you have an affinity with Lotus. You're a Lotus dealer uh, yes. in Italy. How long have you done that for? Uh, 99. We, we started in 99 like a workshop and then uh, we changed to dealer in 2006 and, uh, and 
that we started to organize the first uh, Lotus Cup in Italy in 2008. And the car is here this weekend. Um, is it vastly different to previous generations of car? Much changed? Uh, not a lot of changes, but uh, luckily the, the engine is a completely new engine. It's a 1.8 of a new generation with a, a new generation of supercharger. Uh, because uh, in, the, um, in the previous model, there, uh, it was not uh, cool, 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 and uh, now there is a charge cooler with the water. And this is uh, better and better because, um, uh, especially during the summer, uh, the drop of the, of the of the power and the torque was uh, was big. And uh, with this car, there is no drop uh, in the power and torque. Of course, and you also have another job, don't you? That people may know you for. You're a, you're a racing driver in your own right in, in the World Touring Cup Championship. You're a winner. You're a race winner in the World Touring Cup Championship. Any plans to continue in that series? Uh, I don't know. Uh, at the moment, uh, uh, we. I think uh, that uh, for this year, for the 2014, we I will stay to see what will happen because uh, uh, too much things changed in the in the World Touring Car Championship, and uh, for an, indep an independent team uh, is uh, is too difficult now to run or, or to decide to run this year because uh, uh, the cost of the car increased a lot, and um, uh, and and so uh, we we don't know how many cars there. Will Will be on the grid because uh, at the moment, uh, for sure, uh, on, on the paper there are 16 new cars, and uh, the other cars there will be the TC2, that uh, means uh, the, the old cars. And uh, running TC2 for me is not good, uh, and uh, but uh, I, I can understand that it, that it is a good category for a driver that comes from a European Touring Car Championship. And uh, but TC1 uh, in this moment the budget to run in the TC1 is too high, and um, it's better uh, for this year. I think that it's better to to look what will be and uh, and then uh, to decide. Yeah, very difficult to compete against Citroen. Yes, Sebastian Loeb and Ivan Muller, and that's that's a proper thing. Yeah, I, I think uh, that uh, the the most difficult thing is uh, to to fight with uh, a factor team uh, because. Uh, uh, rumors uh, from rumors that uh, I know they did already many 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 kilometers of testing also last year because uh, I mean, we, we know how many kilometers they already had done and, uh, and so uh, it is uh, very very difficult because usually uh, at the moment the only one uh, car available is uh, the car uh, from Ray Malloc, the new Chevrolet and uh, I'm I'm sure that it will be the, 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 a fantastic car and, and it will be very, very quick. But um, the delivery of the car uh, will be around uh, f uh, the end of February. And, uh, and so the, the season starts in April and you don't have a lot of time uh, to do testing and so on. And, uh, and so, yes, uh, Citroën will start with a completely new car, but they, but it, it became a, an old car because they already than, uh, I think more than 10,000 kilometers of testing. It's done. Uh, finally, Rupert, does Lotus Cars have any ambitions beyond the Cup Series? Perhaps an international sports car program in GT3, GT4? Yeah, I mean, we, we, have, a, we have a very quick Evora GT4. Um, we did slightly new vector cars here because we were focused on the other, on the other models. Uh, we, we are pushing, going to push a little bit more in the GT4 arena. We, I mean, Stefano, for example, is a very quick GT4 driver. It'd be quite nice if he had some time to do that as well. But at the moment, our focus is probably up to GT4 and just slightly above GT4 in a GTC endurance sort of situation. But GT3 at the moment, I would say no. It's quite expensive GT3, isn't it, now? It is. And also, um, the Evora doesn't lend itself that well to the regulations. The engine, it hasn't got a big, heavy, powerful engine. It's a lighter, more nimble car, which doesn't suit GT3 regulations. So we're very happy to go for GT4, slightly above to be successful. Ha have a great show. Uh, we wish you all the best. Thanks for talking to us. Rupert Mannering, Stefano Dusty. Thanks, guys. Thank Cheers. you.